welcome everyone to this session uh, in this session we are going to talk about jsps jsp stands for uh, java server pages and the prerequisites for this session is uh, you should have some understanding of html java and servlets so because a lot of uh, things we are going to talk in this session wouldn't make uh, sense if you do not know any of these technologies so i suggest you to go through those first if you are directly coming on to jsps okay so this is the agenda for our session uh, we'll start off with some introduction uh, where we'll see what what a jsp is and where it comes into a picture of the whole mvc architecture and some of the building blocks of jsps then moving forward we'll see what the different jsp elements are and uh, how do you use it and what are its uses then implicit objects what are the different implicit objects we have in jsps and uh, what is the scope of those objects and what it is used for tag libraries is one of the important concepts in jsps we'll see how do you use tag libraries in your application and how can you build your own tag libraries and ultimately you'll see that how uh, making use of tag libraries your um, program development will be becomes so much simpler and easy right and uh, we'll see what the different the jsp actions are and uh, how you do error handling in jsps and in the end we'll have a demo okay one thing before we start off in the servlet tutorial we've talked about a lot of concepts right and all those concepts do apply to jsps as well if not all most of those concepts do apply to jsps as well right so here in this tutorial we would be putting more emphasis on the concepts which we have already discussed in servlets in fact we are going to browse through them quickly and put more focus on the jsp specific behavior and concepts right so for that reasons i suggest you to go through the servlet tutorial first before directly coming to jsp here right all right so what is jsp jsp stands for java server pages we already said that and it is used to present dynamic content to the users right so here again we are trying to say the same thing even in servlet tutorial we said that servlets is used to present dynamic content to the users and we told that uh, if you want to present static content to a user you use html and when you want to have dynamic content you go for servlets here again in jsp is we are telling the same thing it is used to present dynamic content to the users so what is the difference between servlets and jsps are both the same so basically even though both are used to present dynamic content their job is different right servlets is used for business logic processing whereas jsps are used for presentation logic processing right and in which context am i talking all this about i'm talking this in the context of an mvc architecture right mvc is a very famous architecture uh, which stands for model view controller right where each component has got its own job to do right? the model component is responsible to communicate with the database or and fetch the data or information from the database and make it available to the application to be used the view component is responsible for presenting the page to the user or presenting the response to the end user in a very beautiful and neat format so we visit a lot of websites every day and we see that the ui looks so good and pretty right so all those credit goes to the view component which makes it so beautiful and jsp can be used as the view component here and it is a very strongly used uh, view component and the c part is the controller so basically the controller controls the whole application flow right so whenever a request comes into the application the request is grabbed by the controller and it's the controller is going to decide based on the request to which helper object should it make use of and it's going to decide which view object it is going to make use of and send the response back to the user right so basically the controller intercepts all requests and it controls the whole flow of the application right okay 
So let's take a real time example of how the flow takes place in a web application with servlets and JSPs in place. So, okay. so the user sends in the request and we know that the web container or the servlet container is the interface between your end user and the application. Right. So the request goes to the controller container, sorry, and the the container will again send the request to the servlet. So basically the servlet is the place where you write your business logic, right? And in fact the servlet will make use of certain other helper objects to complete its business logic processing. Okay. And let's say that this helper object is talking to the business tier to execute certain statements, right? Execute certain business logic. And it gets back to the servlet and uh, the data is populated into some bean or some intermediate object in within the application and the control is passed to the JSPs. So the JSP here is representing the presentation layer, right? And we put in all the presentation logic within the JSP. So basically JSP is nothing but HTML, right? With some amount of Java code in it. Right. So this acts as a presentation layer where you write your HTML with some dynamic code where you add your Java. Right. So that's the reason it's used to present dynamic content. And once JSP does all its processing, it sends back the response to the container, which will again send back the response to the end user. Right. So this is how your control flows in an application in a web application with both servlets and JSPs in the picture right and this is the role that is played by the servlet and the JSP so basically the role of servlet is to take the request and perform all the business logic processing and send the request to the serve JSPs which will take care of the presentation logic and send back the response to the user right okay so again let's go in to more details now what is the actual difference or similarities between servlets and JSPs so we know that both JSPs and servlets can handle dynamic data right it has the ability to take in a request and produce dynamic data based on the request so we saw that a servlet handles the business logic part of in an application whereas the JSP handles the presentation logic part in an application. We know that the lifecycle methods of a servlet are init, servlet and destroy, right? And we can override all these methods. Well lifecycle methods in the servlets are I'm sorry in JSPs. It is JSP init underscore JSP service and JSP destroy. So basically we can override JSP init and JSP destroy, but we cannot override JSP service, right? We'll get to know more about this when we talk in more detail about JSP and its structure and all those things, right? So basically whatever methods start with the, an underscore, we will not have the ability to override those methods. And whatever methods which do not have an underscore, we can override those methods, right? So if you want to present the data to the user in using servlets, what do you do? You put HTML within JSP. So here, this code snippet is going to just print time is the current time onto the page, right? And uh, similarly here as well, in JSP, we are doing the same thing, but JSP is the opposite JSP is in Java within HTML. So basically, you're writing HTML code, and whatever Java code you know you need to write, you are putting that in certain special tags, right? And in here, you are using you are writing Java application code, and you are putting HTML statements or HTML tags or elements within Java code, right? So when you take a look at both these code snippets which do you think 
looks more pretty and easy to understand and basically maintain definitely this part right where you simple have you simply have your html code and you have certain special parameters where you put your java code right so for that reasons jsp is very popular and the, for that reasons you need a separate presentation layer to present the information to the end user and you cannot use uh, servlets to perform the presentation as well as business logic okay and both these run within a web container okay all right so we we saw this earlier a jsp in the end is nothing but a servlet right since we saw that we told that we have the same life cycle methods in jsps as well right how do you have the same life cycle methods because whatever you write in a jsp is in the end translated back to a servlet so whatever code you write in a jsp it either goes to the init method service method or destroy method right ultimately so the programmer writes the jsp right and uh, it is translated to a java file and the java is ultimately translated to a class file and when you execute the jsp when you call the jsp it is loaded and initialized as a servlet so ultimately in the end a jsp is nothing but a servlet right so all the features you have in a servlet basically you, you will ultimately have in a jsp as well you should have the ability to use all the features you have in a servlet in a jsp because in the end a jsp is nothing but a servlet right all right so this is one, one important thing you should just make a note of uh, when you talk about jsps what are the different ways in which you can write comments in jsps so this is very interesting because you have a lot of different ways in which you can write comments in jsps and each of these has got a different uh, significance and meaning right so let's talk about the first thing the first is the jsp comments so a jsp comment would look like something like this so whatever you write within these l tags is nothing but a jsp comment right and whatever you write within these tags it does not show on the page so jsp comments does not show up on the page when the page is rendered to the end user these comments will not be visible on the page right and it will be hidden basically and it does not show up in the page source as well so we know that for every page we can simply right click and do page source and it basically gives you the html file which the page is used right so whatever html is used to display that page you will be able to get that html code when you say right click and view page source right so when you do that you will not be able to see this comment as well in the page source as well right and it can only be used outside jsp elements so in a moment we are, we are going to see what the different jsp elements are right so basically whatever you put within whatever java code you want to put you put it within jsp elements right so we can say that whatever goes within jsp elements is java and whatever is outside jsp elements is html right so these jsp comments can be only used outside jsp elements it cannot be used within the jsp elements okay. so the next thing html comments so whatever you put within these tags is nothing but a html comment and the html comment they do not show up on the page right so when the page is rendered to the user the html comments is not being shown in the page but it shows up in the page source right so if you do a right click and you say page source view page source you will be able to find whatever comment you are putting within this html comments you will be able to see that in the page source right and uh, this again can only be used outside jsp elements okay finally we have single line comments so this is a so very popular java style comment we have right single line comments so we can use this in jsps as well so th this has again an interesting thing about it so when you put this single line comments outside jsp elements 
ish shows the comments on the page and the source as well right so basically when you put this type of comments outside jsp element it is going to show this comment on the when the page is rendered to the user and it's also going to show this comment in the page source as well but when you put this within scripts scriptlets and declarations which are nothing but types of jsp elements it does not show the comment on the page and the source right so at certain levels this has got certain behavior right so within scriptlets and declarations it does not show up on the page and the source and this can be used inside scriptlets or declarations and outside jsp elements so basically in the html part of your jsp this can be used or it can be used in scriptlets or declarations right and uh, we can also have um, our uh, multi line comments we used in java right which starts something like this star and then ends with a star and close braces right i'm sorry but backslash forward slash so this can be used within your jsp elements as well okay so this is a brief overview of all the different commenting features we have in jsp